All right. First and foremost, we want to give all praises and our glory to Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Rakakodash. And we want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. That's right. We want to say bless and salutation to also to the men who push in this world in the four corners of the earth in sincerity and in truth, the elect. All right. Um, the two brothers from GMS Trinidad here. You know, the big brother Kwam and Rahawa, you know, we here to do a little edification, you know. As the scripture say, um, breaking strongholds, you know, and this is some strongholds, you know, we, 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 we as prophets of the Lord, who, men who was called to preach the, go, the, the doctrine or the gospel, the good news, you know, we had to break the stronghold. That's right. You know, so we just gonna play this video here. Then we have the bunch of shit. This bald white right, man speaking about, and then the stupid Eve. Who acknowledging we say we just go and debunk these TVs he's speaking about here concerning um the word of Yabashim and Shai. You know? And if I didn't say it. Okay. None of the stories in the Old Testament are actual historical facts. There was no ancient Israel. Moses is the basis for the law. He's the lawgiver. And we're told that he was given the law from God. He comes down from the mountain. The Ten Commandments were copied from something in Egypt called the Twelve Negative Confessions. Even in the government, there... Right. So, we... What is... It is trying to say here is that Moses, right, didn't actually get no law. We trying to say is that Moses actually copied copied from, from the Egyptian, Egyptian scroll or the Egyptian document, wherever he claimed to be it to be, mm -hmm. right. And one thing because we saying is that Israel didn't exist as a people. Mm -hmm. But if Israel didn't exist as a people, or you're still saying Moses copy something from Egypt exactly. and that flying over this nigga bitch head. Right? Mm -hmm. it, if Israel the it is no yeah. does un, un unexistent. If the nation is just unexistent because you knew how Moses got play is due to there was the, 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 the said that they was killing all the firstborn in Egypt and they hit Moses and Moses was ended up in the in the hands of Pharaoh's sister. And I'll play it back. None of the stories in the Old Testament are actual historical facts. There was no ancient Israel. Moses is the basis for the law. He's the lawgiver. And we're told that he was given the law from God. He comes down from the mountain. The Ten Commandments were copied from something in Egypt called the Twelve Negative Confessions. Even in the government, there are, even in the U.S. government, there are statues of uh, Moses in the halls of justice. Most people have never noticed that almost all the carvings Moses has horns because the horns are representing the moon Moses was a focal figure basically these these replicas of Moses was not really no real image of Moses right? these is pagan um, craft Can't. and a craft you understand for the own as the reason the most I tell the angel to hide Moses body because they would I want to make some kind of image to or, or have something to worship you understand but um as he was basically saying um moses is the lawgiver right and moses got the law from something we call the 12 something from egypt right The Ten Commandments were copied from something in Egypt called the Twelve Negative Confessions. Even in the government. Right, so you see, that was copied from what? The Twelve, the twelve negative, negative Confessions. Confession. Right, but as the scripture say, the Lord gave Moses the law, right? Even with Joseph, in the time when Joseph was in Egypt. Joseph knew the law. Joseph knew the law, right? And because of Joseph, that is why Egypt was prosperous. That's right. Right? Joseph, also known as Imhotep. And we're going to go into that in a bit. 
America, even in the U.S. government, there are statues of uh, Moses and the halls of justice. Most people have never noticed that almost all the carvings, Moses has horns because the horns are representing the moon. Moses was the focal figure of an ancient cult of moon worship. Here is the moon god. A lot of the old coins and carvings in the ancient world show the hands rise as they were worshiping the moon god in Egypt. I, I'm not doubting Moses probably did worship the moon god in Egypt because Moses only knew he was an Israelite after a certain time and he was being brought up under Pharaoh's sister, right? right? So he might have learned, you know, things yeah. that is contrary to... Because when the Lord told him to go and um, he said, speak unto the children, is that he say he wasn't what? He wasn't verse in speech, right. he wasn't really... In, in Hebrew. Right. Right? Because he was brought up on that one. Egyptians. Exactly. You understand? So who knows what he did when he was bringing up as a, as Pharaoh's um, son or whatever. Whatever yeah. they call it, right? But now, when Moses became, when he found out, he knew, when he, after he spoke to God, and he knew the most I tell him exactly what he had was to go and do. Hey, the things I used to do, I do them no more. Sorry. Moses become a new man. He became a god under Pharaoh. Okay. He was no more worshiping the gods of Egypt, but confounding the gods of Egypt. Okay. By, the, by, by, by the, um, the wonders he was performing with his staff. The okay. power Yahweh yeah, Hashem yeah, gave him, gave on them. Right? And all these moon gods, all these moon gods actually goes back to, um, to, to Allah. But we will continue, eh? And, of course, in Islam, here it is in the Vatican, you'll see the, the crescent moon. Even in the Catholic Church, they have the crescent moon. Moses represented a moon cult. I've learned this the hard way, but... Hey, really and truly? You can't say Moses represents a moon cult because when Moses came down from the mountain with the law, he didn't come and jump up into the party. Yeah, but what I, and what the point I'm going to bring is... All these things is one man, the scripture never spoke about that. No. All these things is one man put together. All that image, that image with horns on it, cross with, 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 with the moon on it. This is something goes back to ancient paganism. Exactly. Right? That has nothing to do with the Bible. And remember, the children of Israel did went off and made the golden calf. Exactly. And what, when, when Moses, Moses came down, he didn't went and join. Keep that in mind, he didn't went and join the party. Aaron told him is the, the, he was scared of the people since he made the, the calf. Right? That will be somewhere in um, 15, 16. Going down there. Right? The pause? Pause it? Yeah. Alright, so we have the scripture here, you know, speaks about the golden calf, right? In the book of Exodus 32, right? Because Moses didn't worship the calf, right? He destroyed the calf when he saw the nation, what the nation of Israel was doing. So Exodus 32 and 2, it says, And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earring, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earring, which were in the ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hands, and fashioned it with a graven tool. After he had made it a molten calf, he made a molten calf, and they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up, out of the land of Egypt. Right? And that's why the Lord called the nation of Israel foolish too. You understand? Because the God of Israel, who, who the, the, the Lord, he just brought her all out of bondage. Right? He showed all the miracles. He showed all the wonders. He said, I brought her right. out of eagle's wings. Yeah. <laughs> and yet still, the nation of Israel still turned against the Most High. You understand? It says, And Aaron saw it and built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said to tomorrow is a feast to the Lord and they rose up early 
on the morrow and offered burnt offering and brought peace offering. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Go, get thee down for thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves and have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed unto they unto and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee out up out of the land of Egypt. And Yahweh said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people, right? A hardened people, right? Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. Right, so the Lord is going to destroy the nation of Israel for, 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 the, for the wicked act that they made. Right? They made a God, a calf, unto themselves. Right? And that can still say, go back to the moon God, with, with that, what I yet was talking about. Right? But, but the, the whole long and short is it was a pagan something. Right? It was an idol that he was worshipping. Moses wasn't worshipping it. It says Moses besought the Lord and his God and said, God, Yahweh, why do it? Thy rat wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand. Therefore, should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the, from the face of the earth. Turn, thy, turn from thy fierce wrath and repent. Of this evil against thy people, remember Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Israel, thy servant, to whom thou um, swearest by thy own self, and sayest unto them, I will multiply your seeds as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of. I'm going to jump, see if I can jump down. Have something, yeah? Go ahead. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 64. It says, and Yahweh Bashem Yosha shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And thou shalt serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And that is what they do immediately after they came out of the land of Egypt. Worship other gods but they never knew, but they didn't deliver them. Even wood and stone. stone. Right? It says the Lord, verse 14. It says, The Lord repented of his evil, which he thought to do unto his people. And Moses turned and went down from the mountain, and, to the, and the two tables of the testimony were in his hands. The tables were written on both sides, on the one side and on the other were they written. And the tables were the work of Yahweh, and the writing was the writing of Yahweh graven upon the tables. And Joshua heard the noise. Of the people, as they shouted, he said unto Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. And he said, It is not the voice of them that shouted for mis misery. Neither is it the voice of them that cried for being overcome. But the noise of them that sing, Damn. Do I hear? And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, that he saw a calf, and the dancing, and Moses' anger waxed hot, and he cast the tablet out of his hands and broke them beneath the mount. And he took the calf which they had made and burnt it in fire, in the fire, and ground it to powder and showed it upon the water and made the children of Israel drink it. And Moses said unto Aaron, why did this people and why did this people unto thee that thou hast brought so great a sin upon us? So Moses wasn't done with that calf. Exactly. So I don't know how they could re say that the all these replicas they make are Moses. Like not Moses all they talking about. Like not Moses. You understand? And the one thing 
around the world, generally speaking, that people do not want to hear is the truth. I'm not allowed. Right, and that is not the truth because you speak about nothing. So none of the stories in the Old Testament are actual historical facts. There was no ancient Israel. Moses is the basis for the law. He's the lawgiver, and we're told that he was given the law from God. He comes down from the mountain. The Ten Commandments were copied from something in. Right, so that's no. It's true, right? Yeah. Egypt called the 12 negative confession. Right, he spoke about the Egyptians' 12 negative confession, right? So, let me see. And I don't know why he's trying to line up that with the, with, with the commandments because it's, it, there are 613 commandments, you know? The 12, um, where you call it from? Egypt. E yeah, Egypt, um, the 12 negative commandments, something like that. Yeah. We, we 613 13 command even positivity. Not that negative thing you talk about it. Exactly. So basically um let me let me go into now. And I just want to bring a precept here too because he, he stressed on that the nation of Israel was never in existence. All nations was in existence except the nation of Israel. Them wasn't in existence. Yeah. Them never existed. Them never exist. Right? This Psalm chapter eighty three. I start that verse. One says, Keep not thou silent, O power, hold not thy peace, be not still, O power, for lo, thine enemies had thy enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consult against thy hidden ones. Right? They have said, Come, let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. And that's part of this, this demon job to do. You know, to bring Israel out of your, out of your remembrance. Right? A quick one here, second Ezra 7 and verse 10. It says, and I said, un, and I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so is also is Israel's portion because for their sake I made the world. God. Right? So the Lord made the world for Israel. Right? So now we're going to go into some artificial or is it archaeological ar archaeological proof. Right. Right? That that Israel do do exist. That's right. Right? The, the, the things that were spoken of in ancient times that have proof that these things did happen. That's right. Right? Beginning with the, 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 the Pharaoh, beginning with Pharaoh, um, chariots, right? No one the ark. No one the ark. Well, the ark was actually found and exactly what the scripture said it was, Mount Ararat. Right. Lot wife. To the pillar so Right, but she's still there. Sodom and Gomorrah. We even think... Um, Joseph. Jo um, Joseph. As Imhotep. As Imhotep. So we're we going to it. Right? We will start with first. We started with Deuteronomy and you know, um, the Ark. Right, the Ark. What scripture you want to start with it first? Um, Genesis 8. Wonderful. Right, so let me come out of this and I'm going to take this video first. The Ark is it, right? Go. Right, so we go just we will just play this video a little, right? And we will um bring the scripture. Command upon the Fifteen miles south of the volcanic Mount Ararat, the remains of the massive ship were dedicated during a special ceremony. Guest of honor was Ron Wyatt due to his ten years of research at the site. 
The story began in 1957 during the Cold War when aerial photos taken of eastern Turkey while searching for Soviet missile bases revealed a strange boat-shaped formation in the mountains about 6,300 feet above sea level. Life magazine reported on the story after an expedition from the United States went to the site in 1960. Blowing holes in the strange formation, the members of the team came away with the conclusion that there was nothing there of any archaeological interest. Ron Wyatt, like many others, read the story, but he was of the opinion that the site needed further exploration. There had been many claims of seeing Noah's Ark on the volcanic Mount Ararat, but Ron knew that it was a stratovolcano, and he believed that nothing would have been able to survive there. He noted the biblical account of the location of the Ark, and the Ark rested in the seventh month on the 17th day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. Uratu, the biblical Ararat, was a large region in eastern Turkey. This location was certainly feasible. But the factor that captured his interest the most was the length given in the Life magazine story, 500 feet. Most people were looking for a 437-foot Noah's Ark based on the Hebrew cubit. But Ron again went to the Bible to learn more. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. Moses was the author of the Genesis account of the flood. He would have known the cubit of the Egyptians. The Hebrew cubit didn't come into existence until there was a Hebrew nation after Moses' death. The Encyclopedia Britannica stated, the Egyptian cubit is generally recognized as having been the most ubiquitous or universal standard of linear measurement in the very ancient world. The royal cubit equals 20.62 inches. This would mean Noah's Ark was much longer than 437 feet. 17 years after the Life magazine article, Ron finally made the journey to Turkey. When he saw the boat-shaped object, he saw that it looked just like it did. And that is, you see, you see the way they mentioned it? He made the journey to Turkey. And it, I'm going to prove it. Okay. Right, the Genesis 8 and 4. It says, and, and the ark rested. Let us start from 1. Yeah, let us start from 1. Genesis 8 and 1. It says, and, and he remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters as, as, what, as wedged. Right, if I pronounce it, it says, it says the the fountains also of the deep and the winds of the heavens was stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained. The waters returned from all the earth continually, and after the end of the hundred and fifty days, the waters were abated, and the ark rested in the seventh month on the seventeenth day. On the seventeenth day of the month of the mountain, on the month upon the mountain of Ararat, and the waters deceased continually until the tenth month. In the tenth month of the first, oh, Salak, Mount Ararat, right? Mount Ararat. So when you're going to, when you're going to the um geographical search. Right? And do a little landscape here. We ended up. And share it now. And share it ending up. I have a rad day. Like turkey day. Right? I'm going to do the Bible on point. 
I took your ID. Same, la same land mass as you could see. Or what? Right? Are you for the sake go? Nargona Karabakh. Right? So the passage kept you on point archaeologically yeah. and historically. You know? When he saw the boat shaped object, he saw that it looked 20.62 inches. This would mean Noah's Ark was much longer than 437 feet. 17 years after the Life magazine article, Ron finally made the journey to Turkey. When he saw the. Right? And the reason why he could have get on point to because he was going to the scriptures. See me how Christopher Columbus went in the second address to find the coast of the islands. Right? To find the to find um um the, the, the Americas. The, the Americas. Right? Because the Bible itself is a is a map, you know. The Bible itself is a map. <laughs> you understand? So that just won the bunk. One one um um topic to show that the Bible on is point. real is on point, right? He didn't went in no other country after to, to yeah. find the ark. He went right in um to Turkey. Turkey. On the on said. the Mount Ararat. As the scripture, as the scripture said. said. And that's not made up. And they say it in the same interview, they say he went into the Bible and guy he, he he went and Exactly. And I wisdom. The scripture said the Lord God will do nothing but he will reveal his secret and say seven the prophet. So even self, the Lord put that in his mind, right? Because the Lord created all things so he could use Esau, he could use Moab, he could use anybody to bring the truth to us. That's right. Right? Because the scriptures speak about um you have going to men labor, they didn't labor, but um nine I think nine match you boy. Because where 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 would Jake's get our money in, in that time and then we was basically dung and out in all the no, time. No, we no coming out of, uh, um what do you call it? They get money to go to Turkey to do SK to do They were just giving to the answer we can we 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 had their power to um did the book of um this um first Thessalonian First Thessalonians 5 and 20. One, it says, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Right? So that is one proof we made it. Right? Yeah, so we made it. Mm-hmm. Did it? Um, did it say that? Yeah, did it So now. This is the book of. Uh, None of the stories in the Old Testament are actual historical facts. There was no ancient Israel. Moses is the basis for the law. He's the lawgiver. And we're told that he was given the law from God. He comes down from the mountain. The Ten Commandments were copied from something in Egypt called the Twelve Negative Confession. Right? It was copied from the Twelve Negative Confession. Right, that the, the, the Ten Commandments came from. Right, so we're okay, going to now. Yeah, we'll do it. Going to, and what I want to say too is it's amazing how Israel non existent. But remember from Adam, Seth coming right down is that direct lineage. And the reason um, 